Hey everybody, welcome to the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Series, where we teach you how to find the right boat at the best price. And today we're talking about pontoon trailer basics. How to buy the right pontoon trailer. A lot of options, a lot of things to consider. I just um, engaged with a guy on Facebook yesterday, and I figured I'd create this video uh, because there's a lot of confusion and a lot of bad information around trailers uh, and, and a lot of misunderstanding. So we have some great information. As always, we're brought to you by Boat Buyers Secret Weapon Boat Buyers Toolkit. You can download a free copy at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com. One of the things included is a checklist for your trailer, how to make sure you get the right trailer and inspect the trailer properly and a nice checklist to keep track of serial numbers, weights, and all, all the information that you'll need. So what are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to crack the code on one of the most important pieces on the trailer, whether it's new or used, to know exactly what you're getting. Um, not what they say you're getting, but what you're actually getting. The best pontoon trailer, getting the right trailer, galvanized versus painted, uh, options to consider, dual axle versus single axle, and a free gift at the very end. So let's get started. Let's start with cracking the code. On every single trailer in the U.S., there is a, a label that looks similar to this. It's somewhere on the trailer. If there's a boat on the trailer, sometimes it's on the inside portion, and you have to kind of crawl under there to see it. Uh, sometimes it's on the on the tongue. Uh, sometimes it's easy to see. Sometimes it's on the on the rear of the trailer, uh, in, in the back by some of the taillights. But it, it looks like this. It's a standard required decal, or it could be a sticker, or it could be. Um, some of them are even stamped in to the trailer, but let's talk about what's on here. The first one is the capacity, maximum weight of the boat. And, and I put combined there because it's, it's the combined, the total weight sitting on the trailer. So it's the boat, it's the motor, it's the fuel, it's the gear, it's the ice box, it's the, uh, bait well, uh, if it's all filled up, whatever weight is on that trailer is that capacity. So if you have a dry weight of your boat of 3,500 pounds and your motor weighs 500 pounds and you have, you know, 50 gallons of fuel, which is another 350 pounds or so, and you have the cooler full of drinks and ice and you have your anchor and your life jackets and your, your dock lines and your fenders and your gear, um, all of a sudden your $3,500, your 3,500 pound boat is over the capacity for this trailer. So you want to make, you want to understand the total weight, the dry weight of your boat, the weight of the motor, if it's an outboard, if it's not included in the weight of the boat, the estimated weight of your gear, the weight of your fuel, which is seven pounds per gallon. I believe that's right. Seven pounds per, uh, for fuel and eight pounds for water, I think is what it is. Um, but that's going to get you a number so you and then make a guess for gear. I always say throw an extra 500 pounds on for gear uh, on most pleasure boats. If you've got a big cruiser and you've got a, uh, you know, a 28 foot cruiser that's loaded up with more stuff then use a little bit more. But take a rough swag at the gear and the extras and use that as your weight. I'm always going to encourage you to be um, more cautious on your trailer. Listen. There, a trailer is is a big heavy thing behind your boat, and you want to have that sitting on a nice sturdy trailer uh, that's going to give you the support and the safety that you need. Um, don't chintz out on the trailer. So calculate your max weight, the gross vehicle weight, boat and trailer. So this GVWR is the total weight of the max capacity and the weight of the trailer. So if you did the math. This 4,000 pound capacity and this 51, uh, 4,000 pound capacity, 5,100 pound uh, gross vehicle weight means that the trailer itself alone weighs 1,100 pounds. Okay. If you're um, going through a scale, you can get a, a exact measurement, uh, but that tells you what the total weight behind. So that's 5,000 pounds of, of weight behind your vehicle. You want to make sure that you've got the stopping power and the brakes and all that uh, required. Uh, GAWR, gross vehicle weight per axle. So that's just take this number, 5,100 pounds, divided by the number of axles. So you know this is a two axle trailer. 
the tires and the tire pressure. Um, make sure that you have your tires pressurized properly uh, based on the um, uh, what they recommend. And this is the one that is most confusing <laughs> for me. As I would look at trailer trailers, I would always count the number. It's the tenth digit in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So C is the tenth digit, and that tells you the year of the trailer, the manufacturer year of the trailer. But it's a letter. What the heck does that letter mean? Well, this is from '96. It's a letter up to 2000, 2001, they went with numbers. So a one in that position is 2001, all the way up to 2009. In 2010, they went back to letters. So we start over at A, B, C. So a C is a 2012 trailer. So like I mentioned, there's a, a checklist uh, that you can get at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com. I've got this code, this secret decoder ring uh, available in that checklist. So you, you want to get that so you know exactly what you're getting when it comes to your trailer. The type is a trailer. The model is going to be dependent on who's manufacturing it. But usually uh, the letter will indicate the type of trailer. Two will typically indicate the number of axles. And then 4,000, that last number will typically be the capacity of the trailer. So now if you're looking at a trailer and they say, I don't know what the capacity of this is. You can go and you can look it up and you can decipher that tag and you know what those weights mean. The capacity is the most important one. And remember, it's not the dry weight of the boat. It's the full capacity that trailer can hold. So that's everything that's in the boat when you trailer it. All right. So let's move on. On a pontoon, a bunk trailer and a scissor trailer. This is where part of my conversation went. I'm going to recommend for most people to go with the bunk style trailer. You can see the pontoons just roll right on that bunk. They're well supported all the way through. It's a nice sturdy wheelbase. It's a wide, wide wheelbase, which means it's going to be um, very solid. The scissor trailer, they're less expensive. Um, you can find them used sometimes for what seems like a great deal. Uh, the caution is they're difficult to load. They can be more tippy because the wheelbase is inside the pontoons. So your your center of gravity is it's not as, as stable um, because you've got so much weight on the outside of each. And if that isn't loaded perfectly right, isn't tied down perfectly right, and you take a, a corner just a little bit too fast, that boat is going to tip right off. Um, and it happens numerous times by very experienced people. So if you are if you're going a mile or two to your ramp and it's a very easy slow drive, a scissor trailer may work for you. Um, but if you're going any distance, if you're going any speeds, if you are uh, inexperienced in pulling a trailer, avoid the scissor trailer and stick with a bunk trailer for your pontoon. The other thing is a scissor trailer will not work for a tri-tune. So they're they're kind of going by the wayside anyway um, because that third tune doesn't have anywhere to sit. Um, whereas the bunk trailer, they can just add an extra bunk in the middle um, to support that third tune. Okay, so the next choice that you need to make on the trailer is do I want a galvanized trailer or do I want a painted trailer? What are the benefits of each? A galvanized trailer. A galvanized trailer is very durable. You can dunk it in salt water, and if you spray it down, it'll have a good, strong life. It's a heavy-duty um, trailer. On the flip side, it it, it looks gal. It's unfinished. It's not painted. It doesn't look sleek and sharp, but it's very durable. It's very practical. If you're in salt water, um, I would encourage you to lean that way um, for sure. Uh, because it gives you better protection from rust and corrosion. The painted trailer, the painted trailer looks great. Uh, it's typically a powder coated paint that's baked on. Um, it looks really good. Uh, over time, though, as that paint chips and gets dinged or something, uh, rust and corrosion can start. <clears throat> that's why I would avoid a painted trailer if you are looking uh, to boat in any saltwater environment. but more aesthetically pleasing, okay? 
So that's galvanized versus painted uh, trailers. Let's talk about the weight breakdown. This is one of the biggest decisions that you have to make. Do I want a single axle or a dual axle trailer? I'm going to encourage you, just like I encourage you to go with the bunk trailer, is on most pontoons, go with the dual axle um, trailer. Unless you're towing a small, um, you know, 18 to 20 foot pontoon with a, a 50 horsepower motor, um, I'm going to say you're probably better off with the dual axle. The single axle can go up to 5,000 pounds, um, go up to 26 feet long. However, if you have a breakdown with a single axle trailer and you blow a tire or something happens, uh, you're going to be in a, a world of hurt. It also tends to sway more. Those single axles are going to sway just a little bit more. So the longer trailer you have, the more weight, um, the more that's likely to happen. And it's 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 uh, putting more weight on a single axle, uh, which makes the towing characteristics uh, more difficult. Um, they are a little bit less expensive, but that dual axle is going to go from 4,700 pounds up to 6,700 pounds. You can always put a 3,000 pound boat on a 4,700 pound trailer. And the reason you're doing that is because you want those, those extra axles to support you. And remember, that's not just the weight of the boat. It's the weight of the boat, of the motor, of the gear, of the fuel, uh, of everything that's sitting on that trailer. So make sure that you include all of that. And as the outboards get bigger, as you're looking at, at triple pontoons, um, most, in my recommendation, most I would suggest a dual axle. Again, unless you're looking at an 18 to 20 foot or smaller pontoon with a, a smaller outboard um, that a, a single may work for you. Um, brakes, just a, a side note, brakes are required by law on trailers with a gross weight of over 3,000 pounds or more. Um, so that's brakes on at least one axle. Every state is different. Um, I, I'm probably not ever going to do a video on each state's law, but you can go to your state, look up trailer laws, and you can make sure that you are safe, uh, that you are abiding by the, the proper law. Um, and, and brakes is one again. You've got three to 5,000 pounds behind you, including the weight of the trailer. Um, you know, that those brakes on that trailer are going to be a significant help if you need to stop quickly. Um, and uh, just stopping in general will save wear and tear on your tow vehicle. So what are some options on a bunk trailer that you may want to consider? Well, we talked about brakes. I'm going to encourage you highly to get brakes on your trailer. If you're ordering a new one or if you're looking at a used one, uh, and you have um, you have anything with a bigger than 150 horsepower motor or, or bigger than 22 feet, I'm going to say just put brakes on it um, for sure. You're probably over 300 or 3,000 pounds anyway with that configuration, but put brakes on your trailer. It makes it so much easier um, on you, on the tow vehicle, on everything. It's just a safer setup. Front boarding ladder. The front boarding ladder, you can see the green arrow, is just a, a simple way for you to get on and off the boat. If you don't have a boarding ladder, you're going to board with your with your ladder off your pontoon, typically on the on the rear of the pontoon. That works okay. Um, if you if you have that and it's a, a good sturdy ladder, um, <clears throat> then that may be enough for you. But the boarding ladders are extremely convenient, um, so you can board the front or the rear. You don't always have to walk around, and um, it, it also is very convenient if you're trailering and you're dunking it into the water. You can board that boat without getting wet. <laughs> it's, it's much easier uh, if that's how you, you do your trailering uh, on and off the trailer. Load guides, you can see those red dots are the red arrows. Those are called load guides. What they do is on a, on a pontoon, uh, two pontoons, they go in between the pontoon. So all you have to do is kind of get your your nose cones on each side of those guides and they just sort of line you right up on the bunks. They keep you from if there's a current or there's wind trying to push you off, they keep you from pushing off and you can drive right onto the trailer. It makes it real easy. Um, it can be difficult unless you back your trailer to the exact depth um, and you're really good at pulling into that and there's there's little wind or current. Um, to get it onto those tiny little bunks, 
those load guides are very, very uh, helpful um, and, uh, in, in loading your boat. You can add them to almost any pontoon aftermarket, so they're easy. They just bolt right on the, the uh, frame of the trailer. So you can add those on real easy. If you find a trailer that doesn't have them, um, just call the, the trailer manufacturer, uh, go to a local dealer and uh, or even a, a West Marine type place, and they will likely have those trailer guides. Some of them look like this, where they're just a, 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 a post. Some of them, it's a it's a long two by six that goes down the, the length of the pontoon, and it uh, runs parallel to the bunks. Either one, do, they accomplish the same type of thing, uh, but they are very, very valuable. A spare tire. Um, the spare tire, you can see it mounts up front. Typically on a pontoon trailer, you've got all that room under the under the bow of the boat, um, so they mount nice and flat there. Having a spare tire on your trailer, I think, is a great idea. If you don't have one in your tow vehicle, um, I would recommend to have that extra spare tire just in case you never know. Um, and again, you can always mount one on after the fact, um, and you can pick one of those up virtually anywhere, a marine supply store, a dealer, um, a, uh, a tire shop that has trailer tires. Trailer tires are different than other, tri other tires because of the weights that they carry uh, and, and the, um, the application that they're in. So you want to look at those options, and I think those are the uh, options that are, are very valuable and uh, ones that you may want to consider. All right, a used trailer. So the new trailer, it's nice and simple. You you give them the, here's the weight of my boat, here's the length of my boat. It's a tri-tune or a, a pontoon. Um, it has, I want these options. I want it galvanized. They're going to order it, um, and, and you're off and running. On the flip side, if you're buying a used trailer or a used pontoon that's sitting on a trailer, makes it a used trailer, you want to do some of these inspections. Again, in the, the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon, Boat Buyer's Toolkit, there's a checklist that goes through this in a little bit more detail, but you want to check the tires. Uh, trailer tires can go um, bad over time and with usage, but most likely it's over time. So they get the tread gets worn, there's dry rot, there's age that can cause a blowout. Um, and you want to also make sure that they're the same tires, that if it's a dual axle, all four tires are the same so that they run straight and they run proper. Um, if they're not, you, depending on the, the wear patterns, you may want to consider um, changing those out. Brakes and brake lines. I talked about how important brakes are, especially as you get heavier and heavier. You want to make sure not only does it have brakes, uh, but the brakes are engaging. The brakes are actually working. Um, there's not a, a you know a brake line that's that's rusted or or got cut or or somehow is malfunctioning. Uh, so you want to test those. The bunks. If it's got wooden bunks that are carpeted, you want to check and make sure that there's no rot. Just kind of when the when you're doing your test drive, again you can find a video on how to demo a boat the right way, how to demo a pontoon the right way. There's also in the in the toolkit. Um, there's a checklist, a demoing checklist, but when that boat's off the boat, off the trailer, you want to just shake all of those bunks and make sure that they're secure and they're solid all the way around. Uh, lighting and wiring, you want to hook your tow vehicle up to the trailer if you can, and you want to test brake lights, blinkers, flashers, um, parking lights, make sure all those lights are working properly, and that will make sure that um, your wiring is set up properly and the wiring on the trailer is set up properly and all the lights are, are working properly. Um, axles, wheels, and bearings. Again, with the boat off the trailer, you can see those axles pretty well. Make sure there's no rust or major issues. Um, you can check the grease in the bearings. If they have the bearing buddies, you may even just squeeze a little bit in there, um, see how much is in there. Um, and the wheels, are there any dents? Does it look like something's bent, a rim's bent or something? Um, check all that as well. And then the title. If trailers are title in your state, you want to match up. Remember that, that decoding? Now you know how to read that little tag on the trailer. You want to match that up to the title and make sure that, uh, that the VINs match. And the trailer you are buying is the trailer that they have the title for and that all of those serial numbers match up. That's, that's uh, very key. So, mentioned that um, we've got a free gift for you, the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Toolkit. You can get that at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com. You can claim yours for free. Just put in your email. We'll email it right to you. 
You'll also get a, a notification about an opportunity on how to save hundreds, maybe even thousands, uh, potentially tens of thousands of dollars uh, when you buy your next boat. Um, but the toolkit will give you how to buy the right boat at the best price, how to demo a boat or pontoon the right way, must ask questions for boat dealers and private sellers, how to maximize your trade if you have a trade, how to get the best boat loan, best boat insurance, and much more. So it's a great toolkit. It's yours for free. Um, all you got to do is go to Boat Buyer Secret Weapon. You'll find a little button that looks similar to this. Uh, click on that, put in your, your name and email address, and that will be emailed to you instantly. Thank you very much. And remember, life truly is better on a boat.